What if I told you that you can have a direct impact on a world major issue that today results in dramatical effects? The issue I have in mind is responsible of one death out of five around us. It's killing more people than tobacco does. The issue I have in mind is destroying our culture and education. The issue I have in mind is the cause of too many suicides and keeps expanding years after years. The issue I have in mind is destroying our environment. I am talking about our industrial food system. But the good news is we all can do something about it. You, me, all of us, three times a day. I was born and raised in Paris. I'm definitely a city girl. However, when I was a kid, during weekends and holidays, my parents used to take me to the countryside in this very small village of Picardy. I remember spending my time around there in the nature, playing in the farms, with kids whose parents were actually the farmers cultivating the fields around us. We had outside the house a vegetable garden and a chicken coop. So I was literally picking up the eggs and tomatoes in the morning, and I had them the same evening for dinner in my plate. I didn't realize it at the time, but this was so important. Real fact, today we have many citizen kids that are asking what is the name of the tree producing the french fries. This may sound cute from a kid, but it's a disaster. It's a disaster when you don't know anymore what is the link between what you have in your plate that will go in your body and where does it come from. It's a proof of disconnection between the earth we live on and our lives and the kids are not the only one concerned. So, do we know what we eat? Do you know what you eat? Let's take an example. Could you tell me how many ingredients you can find in this industrial soft bread that I'm sure some of you may have this morning for breakfast? Water, cereal, oil, salt, sugar, and about 13 other different ingredients. Yeah, you heard me right. You can find until 18 different ingredients in industrial soft bread. And believe me, you don't want to know their names. Well, I could have taken worse example, like the lasagnas with horse meat inside, you know, or the eggs with fipronil, milk with salmonella. Anyway, this is just the tiny tip of the iceberg we have in front of us. We completely forgot the story of our food, how it is made, where does it come from, we forgot that behind each and every product, there is a story of a man or a woman. We forgot about this story because industrials are making our food anonymous. Worst, we are being told fake stories to make us sleepy. And as we forgot, we started destroying our planet and our health years after years. We need to stop killing what is making us live. Intensive agriculture cannot produce without destroying. Every year, 20 million hectares of farmlands are becoming unusable because of intensive farming practices. And look at what is happening with production of palm oil that many industrials are putting in their product. We know that palm oil production is massively killing ecosystem and its species in Indonesia and Malaysia. In this area, Deforestation is accelerating at a terrible speed. Between 2011 and 2013, more than 6 million hectares of forest have been burned, which represents the size of a country like Ireland. Consequences, destruction of the natural ecosystem and resources of animals like orangutans. 25 of them are dying every single day. Even worse, palm oil consumption has been proven to have a link with cancers. So we all know famous brands that have palm oil in it, and we all know this very famous one, you know, this brown paste that kids and even adults love that you can eat for breakfast or for snack. Do you remember last year 
when a supermarket decided to promote off 70% of its price? Here is a quick reminder of what happened. We are talking about dream tonight, but this is a nightmare. So let me ask you one question. How did we arrive to a society where people are literally running after products, destroying their health and their planet? One answer is, we don't really feel concerned. We have been brainwashed since we are kids not to think about it. And industrials are doing everything to keep selling more and more, no matter what, at the expense of our health and of our environment. Big companies owning the food system are spending millions to build a story around their product. They want us to believe that they, as a brand, will feed us, will bring people together, will support us in every step of our lives, right? And this is powerful because we all have this emotional connection with some food we were eating when we were kids. What is happening today is exactly what happened a few decades ago with tobacco. It was killing, little by little, but surely, people knew about it, but they were still advertising. Look, even Father Christmas and babies were promoting it. This would be unbelievable today, but it was the case a few decades ago. Well, maybe our grandchildren will say the same about that. So, if big companies take, cannot take care of our health and planet because they prefer to make money on our backs, maybe we can count on governments or public institutions. Well, no. Let me introduce you to big companies' best friend, lobbies. They are very powerful. Lobbies' mission is to influence political decisions. They have a budget given by big companies to promote their interests. Their job is to slow down the legislative train so that laws don't appear, to let big companies make more and more profit. By doing that, the cigarette lobby succeeded in delaying the tobacco law for more than 20 years. This is exactly what is happening with the law about taxing palm oil. It never appeared. This is exactly what is happening with the law about nitrate of sodium. You know, this ingredient you can find in industrial ham to make the ham pink. It never appeared. Even if it's proven that nitrate of sodium is a direct cause of colorectal cancer, the third more common cancer in France. So, how do we do it? And you know that it's also a reason why big companies are paying scientists to write scientific studies saying that their product is not dangerous. This is called corruption. What about pharmaceutical lobbies playing hand in hand common interest with the one from agribusiness? See, if you don't eat very well and buy some industrial processed food, you will probably get sick someday and go to the doctor and then to the pharmacy to buy some medicine. Lobbies know that there is no money in a healthy people. And obviously, there is no money in a dead people either. The money is in the middle, people who are alive, but with chronic disease. Every minute in the US, a person is killed by a heart disease. We have 40% obese in the US, already 18% in France, and it's spreading very quickly in both countries. What about global warming? The second source of greenhouse gas emission is animal farming, just behind heating and electricity, but before transportation. Producing one kilogram of beef requires 15,000 liters 
of water. And we know that there is a water crisis going on in the world, right? So you see all these people in the streets working for climate? This is great, but it's useless if you don't change the way you eat every day. So now that we know, how do we change things? The change won't come from big companies. The change won't come from governments or public institutions. They will take measures, make adjustments, while what we need here is a drastic change. What if there could be a single solution to all of these problems? A solution so comprehensive and straightforward that it's mind-bugging we haven't took it seriously. We, as citizens, have the power. It's in our plates. The only power able to change the system is the one we have as consumers. And it's a huge one. But we forgot about it. Maybe because it's easier than to take full responsibility for it. Let's be honest. Without us, consumers, big companies are nothing. We have the power to change things and to build the world we want to live in. Actually, by choosing what we eat three times a day, we have much more impact than in putting a ballot in the box once every five years. With food, we can choose the economic system we support, the agriculture type we want to favorize, the social relationships we build, the education of our children, our health, our environment, animal protection. So stop telling ourselves stories and excuses. Be ambitious. Dream big. From dream to reality, how can we do it from now? Three steps. First, question, always. Don't take for granted what you see on TV or on marketing. Do your best to learn and to understand because knowledge is power. Then, take action now. And here, no space for compromise or average solution. You need to be radical. Boycott product destroying your health and your environment. Eat less or no meat. Eat local and seasonal products. Go to the market rather than the supermarket. Last, spread and repeat this message around you and on social media. So it's true. It may be more difficult. But guess what? Great changes don't come easy. So how ambitious are you for yourself and your planet? You know, a while ago, I was buying some industrial food. But when I began to discover the consequences of my choices, in a way, I didn't have a choice anymore. I had to embrace this subject and to fight every day for the world I'm dreaming of. And saying that my individual action will have too small impact is people's worst excuse to do nothing. Food is not part of my everyday job. I work in a net tech company. But I made the choice to fight every day for better and more conscious food choices. So you students who are smart and educated people, if you don't do it, what are the chances left for our world? As you know, Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. Let's begin with your next meal. Next time you buy your food for lunch or dinner, wonder yourself, which system am I serving? The alarm is ringing as a wake-up call. Let's listen to it. We can change the story and make history. Let's act from now. It's different. Thank you.